Hi guys, welcome to today's video which as usual looks at how to best use heroes and villains in Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the Galactic Assault game mode. This week we will be covering Aiden Versio, who of course is the protagonist of Battlefront 2's recent campaign. If you are enjoying these videos so far, please do me a big favour by both liking this video and subscribing to this channel. I do put a lot of effort and time into these videos whilst also working two jobs, so any support you can give is greatly appreciated. I have also started streaming on Twitch, and at the moment I pretty much do this whenever I'm playing, which is usually most days at around 9pm, and sometimes on weekends. I've left a link to my Twitch channel in the description. As with all heroes and villains, Aiden Versio starts with three main abilities. Her pulse cannon is basically a sniper rifle that requires charging before it can be fired. The more you charge the rifle, the more powerful the rifle becomes. As soon as it hits full charge, it will fire regardless of whether you release the trigger. In many ways, it has a similar mechanic to the pulse cannon that troopers could use in Battlefront 1. When activated, Aiden's stun droid ability sees her release a droid towards the nearest enemy. Once it reaches its target, the droid then stuns them for a short time. It can also stun other units who are in close proximity to the droid's original target. Finally, Aiden's droid shield ability again sees Aiden make use of her droid, but this time it forms a protective shield around Aiden, and whilst the ability is active, Aiden is protected from blaster fire. As well as these abilities, Aiden is equipped with the TL-50, a fast-firing automatic blaster, and she can also use a secondary form of fire, which is basically a concussion blast. To do this, assuming you are playing on the PlayStation 4, hold down left trigger, and rather than aiming, Aiden will charge the concussion blast for a short time before releasing it. It does splash damage wherever it lands. Now we have discussed her main traits, let's move on to Aiden's strengths and weaknesses. Starting with strengths, Aiden's TL-50 is an excellent blaster. It has a very quick rate of fire, and according to a couple of sources I found online, it has a higher DPS than any other hero blaster in the game. If someone gets too close to Aiden, you should be able to melt them in seconds with this gun. I've also found it to be pretty stable, and hence easy to control, despite its high rate of fire, and so it can actually operate pretty well at medium ranges. What makes this weapon even more special is its secondary fire. This one hit kills specialists, officers and assault troopers, providing it hits them directly, or at least gets very close to them. It also deals a pretty wide radius of splash damage, meaning if it is used at the appropriate times, Aiden can deal a ton of damage to lots of enemies with just a couple of these concussion blasts. Overall then, Aiden has a gun which can operate at all ranges, and it really is a standout feature. Aiden's next strength concerns one of her abilities, the droid shield. I can't even remember the amount of times that this ability has saved me from what looked like certain death, but rest assured it is a lot. By using this ability, Aiden can escape the most difficult of situations as once the ability is activated, Aiden is shielded from all sides from most blaster fire, meaning she can literally turn her back to the enemy and attempt to retreat to a safer position. I don't know exactly how much damage Aiden's shield can take, but based on a lot of experience using it, I can safely say that it can take a substantial amount of damage, more than enough to let Aiden get away. Unfortunately, Aiden does have some absolutely critical weaknesses, which can make her really quite tricky to play as. First of all, she starts out with a pretty pathetic 550 health points, and as she is not a force user, she can't actually regenerate much either. To be honest, it isn't that much better than a heavy trooper, considering that these units can always regenerate back to maximum health. At least Boba Fett, with his 500 health points, is able to offset this weakness by using his jetpack to constantly stay mobile on the battlefront. Aiden, on the other hand, is pretty slow, and so if she happens to get caught up in any battles with other heroes, or even elite troopers, who can penetrate her shield, it really is very difficult to survive those situations. And anyway, even if you do, you might find yourself with only, I don't know, 200 odd health points left, and clearly, this will drastically impact on how aggressive you can realistically be with Aiden. Other than droid shield, Aiden's two other abilities are at best weak and situational, and at worst, completely pointless. First of all, her stun droid ability is really buggy. 
Once activated, Iden releases her droid, and it seems to take forever for the droid to reach its actual target. And even then, when it does, it only stuns the enemy for a very short space of time. Honestly, it is just quicker to kill the trooper in front of you with Iden's very effective blaster, and in any case, whilst you are messing about trying to stun your enemy, they will probably deal a ton of damage to you before your droid has even reached its target. Iden's pulse cannon, whilst not as useless as her stun droid, is nonetheless rather weak and ineffective unless you happen to be an absolute expert using this weapon. First of all, it takes a short while to charge up, and if you want it to be a one-hit kill, you have to charge it for even longer. Even then, unlike Bosk's blaster, which also needs to be charged up, Iden's pulse cannon automatically fires when it reaches full charge, as I have already mentioned. So you can't simply wait for an enemy to walk out into the open before then firing, you have to make sure you leave enough time to charge the gun up, but you don't want to leave too much time because the weapon will fire before you've had the chance to aim at your target. Overall then, this is really really tricky to use, and it can be difficult to score many kills with it. Before we move on to discuss how to use Iden on Galactic Assault, just a quick side note, I see a lot of people in the community calling for nerfs and buffs, etc, for different units in the game, and I want to make my position on this clear. I absolutely agree with some of the points being made, so for example, Palpatine should obviously not be able to use his lightning through walls, and Leia's secondary fire should not lock onto enemies as easily as it does. But I don't talk about these sorts of issues too much in these videos because this information is not going to help you to improve your game with heroes and villains. The reason I'm mentioning this now is because Aiden is one of the villains that many players argue is basically just unusable on Galactic Assault. I agree that she is certainly not the strongest option, and I do think her abilities in particular need changing or at least improving. But having said that, even in her current state, she can still be used effectively, as hopefully I'm going to demonstrate. The most important tip I can give when using Aiden is to make sure you use her to attack objectives, because this is really where she shines. I'll use today's footage to give you an example of what I mean. On Tatooine, I attacked one objective where my team had to basically take control of a small building. By staying far enough away from the building, I ensured that Aiden was not at risk of taking too much damage, and then I proceeded to repeatedly use my secondary fire by firing this straight into the building, thus dealing damage to large clusters of defenders. If enemies ever got too close to me, and I thought the situation was overwhelming, rather than risking a shootout where Aiden would undoubtedly lose a large chunk of her health if she didn't die, I would activate Droid Shield and retreat to a safer position, where I could then use my secondary fire again. Yes, this may seem a little spammy, and perhaps a bit cowardly, but you have to play to Aiden's strengths and understand her limitations, if you expect to go on reasonable killstreaks with her. This strategy is effective on lots of different maps and phases when playing Galactic Assault. To name but a few, it can be used on the second phase of Kashyyyk to flush out enemies defending the two objectives. It can also be used while on the second phase of Naboo to damage enemies down the corridors. I have also had success with it on the second phase of Hoth by standing in a safe position outside the rebel base whilst firing shots into the control zones. There are plenty more examples I'm sure. The splash damage created by Aiden's secondary blast is, from my experience, pretty extensive, so once you learn to find out which positions enemies normally take on certain maps, a skill you will learn over time, you should be able to score kills by just firing speculative shots into what are usually crowded areas. At long ranges, Aiden's secondary fire can still be effective, but the shot begins to drop quite quickly in the air meaning you need to accurately gauge the height of your shots accordingly. If you do happen to be at this range, this is probably the one situation where you might pick up a few kills with Aiden's pulse cannon ability. However, you are unlikely to affect games in the way that a good Aiden player should by doing this. Aiden should be operating at medium to close range, supporting her teammates and clearing the way for her allies to effectively attack objectives. If you do find that an enemy gets quite close to you, and you feel well equipped to defeat them, what I usually do is activate Droid Shield, absorbing any damage Aiden could take, then I aim at my opponent and start firing. As soon as you start firing, Aiden's Droid Shield deactivates, and because of how good the TL-50 is at close range, you should melt your foe really quickly. 
try not to use your secondary fire at these kinds of ranges, as first of all, in the time you spend charging the blast, you will likely take a lot of damage, and secondly, it can be very difficult to aim at close range. As I've mentioned before, even at medium range, the TL50's primary fire is still very effective, so if you have someone in your sights, don't be afraid to try and take them out, and even if you don't, you can quickly follow your attack up with Iden's secondary fire. When using Iden, you always need to try and stay in reasonable proximity to your teammates, because if a hero manages to track you down, they usually make very short work of Iden. Her droid shield is ineffective against lightsaber attacks, and so if a Luke, or a Ray in particular, are chasing you, it's probably not going to end well especially considering that they are much, much quicker than you. If you end up in this situation, it might be worth trying to use your droid to stun your pursuer, just to give you a little bit of extra time to escape, but because of the relative weakness of this ability, I certainly don't guarantee that this would work. So as I've said, stay close to your teammates and you shouldn't encounter this problem too many times. That's going to be it for today's video guys, please leave me a like if you've enjoyed it, I'm also really interested to know what people think of Aiden, so let me know what your best killstreaks with Aiden are, and on what maps. Next week I'll be showing you how to dominate your enemies as Rey. If you are enjoying this series so far, please subscribe so you can see more of these videos in the future.